Hey Spunkers, Draga1 here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Whistler. And I'm uh, going to be filming this a little bit differently today. It's probably going to be kind of awkward. Right now I'm using a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. So right now the camera is actually six feet away from the monitor, which is actually pretty freaking far. Um, right here is about the halfway point. The computer's about, you know, right there. And then the monitor's way back there. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to zoom in on things closer. I just was not able to zoom in with on the uh, 18 to 55 millimeter lens that I usually use. So we're going to see how well this goes. Um, as you can see, we can see uh, a lot of the detail there, I guess, but also a lot of the pixels and Moire. patterns. So I guess we'll get started in trying to install Whistler. Now, one of the challenges I'm going to try first is to see if we can get Neptune upgraded to Whistler. Might not actually work out, considering uh, they're both like beta versions of the OS. So it probably won't work, but I have to at least give it a shot. Try and run the setup from within Neptune. So let's go ahead and get this restarted, and we'll uh, see how far we can get. Microsoft Neptune, okay. So let's take a look at the... My computer here, and we have our thingy. Now, interestingly, it just said, uh, what? Now, as you can see here, Windows Neptune has a pretty high version number here. It's not quite at um, Windows XP level, but if you compare it to the build number here, um, you'll notice that uh, it has some differences and it might recognize the Neptune one as being a higher number. So that's probably going to keep us from actually upgrading. As you can see, it confirms this by saying it's an older version. Um, Neptune reports as newer. I'm going to leave this version of Neptune installed for another day. And I'm going to see if we can just get this installed on yet another hard disk. This is the Neptune drive here currently running, got to be careful with it. Um, we're going to be using the 2.5 inch drive from that didn't work for us from the last video with the SATA to IDE adapter here. So, uh, you know, this thing keeps coming back, getting a lot of use out of this one. There we go, right there. Hopefully it will not have the same read errors with this motherboard. Let's go ahead and hook this up, I guess. Now, this drive has a fresh format of NTFS. I guess I'm just going to leave it hanging here. Could just hang it like that. <laughs> I mean, if it fall, I mean, it could fall out, right? It's just being held on by its uh, actual SATA connector there. You think we should live live on the edge and just let it uh, just hang there? You think that's smart? I know it's not smart, but you know we can do it. Because what's going to happen is it's going to go. Maybe I'll tuck it in. All right. So there we are. That's not going anywhere. And of course, let's not forget. Sit on it. Now we're going to boot off the CD. And it says it's Windows 2000. Kind of similar to how when we tried to install Longhorn, it said Windows XP because it was the Vista beta. And since this is the XP beta, we have Windows 2000. Now, how close is this going to look like to Windows 2000? Is this going to be a tremendous waste of time? We're going to find out. And if this doesn't look good, We'll switch to another build. There are a lot more builds of this available on WinWorld PC than there was of Neptune, than there was of Nashville. Last time I did this, it got stuck at this screen, so let's just wait and see what happens. As you can see, just like with Windows Neptune, we have the same ACPI issue. Just have to press F7 a lot. Ah, oh, shit. Hmm. Apparently I didn't press F7 enough. Wait a minute, this is a different error. Yeah, I don't think anything likes this hard drive. I think this drive might be bad or something. Fuck, that means I have to get another hard disk somewhere. Uh, guess I'll swap it out. So I got another hard disk here. It's a little bit bigger, but probably not failed like this one. Now try this whole thing again. Now, unfortunately, I would probably use start using some PETA drives from here and there using my adapter. But I did fry that adapter. I don't know if I made that clear at some point, but I did actually break that. So, shit. 
an inaccessible boot device error. Well, let's plug the Neptune drive in and see if we have the same problem. Let's try it again. I... Okay, well, this either means I need to get another build of Whistler, or I need to try another motherboard. Which one do you think I'm going to do? Now, here is our Windows XP motherboard again. You can't really see it because uh, the walls of this box are higher, which also means that uh, a lot more of the screen is obstructed. But since we're just doing a quick test here, we can see whether or not it's going to be bootable from the CD. So let's give it a try. All right, and let's see if it'll boot off of the, uh, as you can see, the Hitachi's in there. I'm go I've gone back to the 160 again. Now we can actually use um, Sega with it. So let's go to this, now that. Now we'll find out if this board has uh, is ACPI compliant, and uh, we'll just wait it out. Oh, would you look at that? It's precisely the same error. Inaccessible boot device. Well, uh, pretty much means we have to switch to another build of Whistler. So I got it. Now I have Whistler. 512267.1. The first one I tried was the first one. And this one I'm going to try is the last one in the early Whistler category. Let's go ahead and try this. Boot from CD. And now it actually says Windows Whistler at the top, which is kind of weird. Nice, I guess. So we'll wait for it to do its initialization. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Set of program has detected that you're about to install a, an evaluation version, evaluation capitalized for some reason, of Microsoft Windows Whistler operating system, which contains a time-limited expiration for evaluation purposes only. So right now the computer's year is set to 1995, so hopefully that doesn't fuck anything up. So as you can see, it looks like almost every other Windows install screen, just with a different name at the top, Windows Setup can automatically configure most aspects of your installation, requiring little or no input from you. If you would like to use this feature, please press Enter now. I wish they implemented that. So let's just see what happens when we press Enter. Oh, great. Why are we having this problem again? If it legitimately can't find the drive, I am doubtful because the BIOS was able to find the drive. You saw it at the boot screen. So why can't it continue? So, maybe we need to just press F3. Oh yes, it's going to have to restart it. Son of a bitch. So as you can see, it does in fact detect the Hitachi drive on the SATA bus. It won't do anything, because there's nothing on it. It's blank NTFS volume. So, I get you, I get you. Maybe it doesn't have support for SATA. So what do we do about that? Why? We use the SATA to IDE adapter, of course. I do have another free IDE cable here. There we go. So let's try it again. Looks like we're back. And let's let it do its automatic configuration. Aha! So now we got a little bit further. So it's going to check drive C, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's now copying files. Didn't even have to select a partition. It just goes. I'm fine with that. Saves me a step. Restart it. So now we'll want it to boot off of the hard disk. So now the Hitachi is on the IDE bus. Failed to arc read? Wait a minute, what did that say? Well, it looks like it just defaulted back to booting off the CD again. So basically, I don't think it was able to read the hard disk for whatever contrived reason. I googled, failed to arc read, and I just got a bunch of Fortnite videos. So what are we going to do now? we got to find another hard disk, I guess. We could install it on Neptune. Well, interesting thing about the Neptune hard disk. It actually formed a boot menu. Remember it originally had Windows 98 on it? And then when I installed Neptune, it created a separate boot menu entry? Is that just what happens when I install Windows NT OSs on top of themselves? It just adds, automatically adds to a boot menu? Well, if I frickin' knew that, that would have made a couple videos ago a lot easier. So 
So here's the Neptune drive. Let's get this mess out of the way. Reattach Neptune here. Now this time we won't want to have it do a automatic install because it might just erase the whole drive. We want to install it next to it, hopefully. Now I know Neptune's going to throw a bitch fit on here because it's not going to have it motherboard it's used to if I, if I am to boot from it. So now we have a Quantum Fireball. But let's still boot off of the CD. Here we are yet again. But now, so let's press the C key to customize. Well, here we are. Maybe that's the thing that was kind of messing up. Maybe I just assumed that all these operating systems can read NTFS no problem, and really I just need to put it on FAT32. Seems like a pretty bullshit thing. I know Windows 2000 can use f NTFS. It goes way back, so I mean, I, I don't think that's it. But every time I try to install something on this, it just works, so... Let's just press enter on that. Oh my god, look at all this. NTFS quick, fat quick, NTFS, fat. Convert the partition to NTFS. Oh my god, that's a new one. Well, let's leave it how it is, because we know that Windows XP can be installed on FAT32 no problem. The Windows folder already exists and may contain Windows installation. Use a different folder, press escape. WinXP... Beta. There we go. Now, if we're lucky, we'll get a cool boot menu of all the weird windows I've collected on this hard drive. There we go. Now you can see the hard disk activity, sort of. I'm going to boot directly off the disk. And it just gives me the NTLDR is missing message, which basically means that the, the bootloader isn't working, or it's broken. I don't know how it got broken, but it's broken. Well, since that's essentially fucked... I can go back and overwrite the Nashville hard disk. I get so sentimental with these installations, I don't know why. I should just wipe them out immediately and just keep using the same hard drive, but uh, I feel like there's something I can go back to, you know, sometimes. But last one I went back to was Server 2003, and that was a failed drive. Alright, we're back. Time to get messy. As you can see, I did some stupid shit here, trying to get uh, Nashville to work. We're going to delete it. So now we got our unpartitioned space. But what Whistler gives us that the other operating systems did not was the ability to quick format NTFS. Now, as you can see, it doesn't give you any option for FAT file systems. It's just giving me NTFS. So... We're doing, gonna do a quick format on this 250 gig drive. Hopefully, it doesn't poop itself. Bye bye, data. Uh, all right. Well, as you can at least see, the hard disk indicator light. Pretty much a first time on this channel where you can actually see what the hard disk is doing while it's doing stuff, which is pretty annoying that that hasn't been sooner. But uh, there you go. All right, so now I could pretty much just let it go on its own. We've got a fresh format. It was quick. We got the install files. You can't go wrong here, folks. It's an IDE drive. Still, I'll still manually boot off of it. Just, we're going to eliminate any weirdness here at all. Okay, Western Digital Caviar. There we are. And boom, finally, it had to be a formatted drive that's IDE and not... Sh Holy shit, that's amazing! That's what I wanted to see! Wow! Look at this! What? No! I don't understand! I need this! Uh... The signature for Windows Whistler is invalid. A required certificate is not within its validity period when verifying against its current system clock or the timestamp. The date slash time set on your machine is invalid. Please go to your BIOS to fix it. So it even tells me to circumvent this by going to the BIOS. Anyway, but let's look at this. Let's back out just a little bit. Doesn't this look like the Windows ME setup? This does not look like the Windows 2000 setup. This is the freaking rebranded Windows ME setup. It's amazing! Well, I'm gonna go change the system time and date, I guess. Oh shit, that's right! This is a different motherboard. This one is the the modern time and date. Shit, I don't know what to put the date as. Well, let's try uh, the year 1999. Release. Oh shit! Alright, so here's our 
set up here. It's changed. Oh, it thinks it's 2003. Okay. How about uh, January? There we go. Should be good enough. Boot and Whistler again. There's the beautiful logo. Setup is being restarted. Oh no, it knows it fucked up. Well, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Oh my god. I still don't have the t time and date set right. Well, let's try 1998. 1998. I, that's not even what I typed, but uh, it worked. Big surprise, right? Luckily, though, I managed to look it up, and it turns out that I need to do October 9th, 2000. I need to double-check that, but uh, I think that's the right one for this build. 2000. There we go. This should do the trick. Well, I walked away for a while, and we're already here. So it didn't have the error. I did pick the correct date. So if you're using that build, use that date. So yeah, not really much to say um, how this looks compared to Windows ME. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Okay, alright. Whoa! Man, there's still a lot of shit in the way. There well, there we go. That's perfect! Whoa. Look at this. It looks like Windows XP. It actually... This... This is it! This is the crossover point! Remember in Windows 98 you had, what are you doing over here, and they had a little load bar? I had no idea that's where Windows XP got its inspiration. You can see that this is what ME looked like. And... Well, roughly, I guess. And then all they had to do was tint it blue, and we're fine! Oh my god, this is amazing. Well, the computer restarted on its own, as it always does, and uh, I was watching it, so uh, we'll see how far we got. It's probably just going to continue with the setup, so... Oh, you know, I just realized, now that I've moved the camera up, you can no longer see the hard disk activity. Not that you really care, but... Whatever. Oh, man. I like how it's no different from, like, the Windows 98 or Windows 95... Except for the fact that instead of a black border, what Windows Whistler Professional testing purposes only. Oh, we're breaking the rules now, man! Whoa! Well, that's my computer name, I guess. Wish they got this fancy with Windows XP. All right, and there we go. Yeah, that doesn't look right. There's no way that Whistler has the drivers for this video card, but then again, there is there are drivers for it for Windows 98. We're done already? Whoa, dude. That looks like shit, but and awesome at the same time. Okay, I can see this is definitely a hybrid here. Whoa, what is this? What is that little pixelization? Oh, we're getting fancy, Microsoft! Look at that! And we, of course, have the same thing we had on Neptune with the comments thing. Okay, what do we not have here? And we don't have USB, we don't have Ethernet, we don't have bullshit. So if I want to get the drivers over here... It's going to be a pain in the ass, because it doesn't have anything for this motherboard, so... Shit. Well, I guess I can scrounge around for a different uh, video card, and hope that uh, Whistler has the drivers for it. I've copied a driver installation file for the FX5200 onto the hard drive, and uh, now we're going to actually see what it looks like uh, on its first time boot, I guess, without being part of the setup. So we'll let the... CD portion go there, and starting Windows, and then we'll get Whistler. There she is. Ooh. Applying computer settings. Now this, of course, would look better if we had the drivers installed. Now the driver package is specifically for Windows XP. Hopefully the version number on this is enough to trick the installer package into running it. If not, I gotta dig around for another, I don't know how long, to try and uh, find the 
something that'll work with something more of the Windows 2000 era. So we're going to my computer here, and uh, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the screen. You can see how it's starting to become Windows XP very slowly. And here's our... Oh, sweet, it works. NVIDIA, or at least... Yeah, it says Windows 2000 slash XP display drivers. Perfect. Okay, now this is what I like to see. Yes, I don't care about digital signatures. What the fuck? All right, so let's restart the computer into a new tomorrow. Here you can see the shutdown screen, which I forgot to show you earlier. Should not see me? The hell was that? Uh, that was scary. Okay, we're starting up again, presumably with the drivers installed. Let's see if the startup screen here looks any different. Doesn't appear to. So it has the same stupid 16 colors. Okay, let's close this out and see if we can change the settings here. Okay, what the hell happened? They didn't install? What? And all that work for nothing? Oh, panel. That's what? Why? <laughs> no, no, fuck, yes. Fuck. There we go. Did I spell control wrong? I, this looks terrible. Switch to classic view. We're already wanting to go to classic view. This is gross. All right. So, what the hell's wrong with this then? I thought I already done this. So, let's choose the driver to install. It will be a display adapter. Oh, would you look at that? Select the manufacturer model hardware device, then click next. That's precisely what I want. Yes! See, why didn't I do this before? This hardware is not working properly. An error occurred during installation of the device. Well, that's just great. Okay, so this... Uh, video card is probably too new for this operating system. But guess what isn't? The ATI Rage XL from 1998. Now this has got to be one of the weirder looking video cards. Yeah. It's got that little hook thing that I just entirely disregarded. That's it right there. Oh, it's a different type of AGP. I don't run into that very often. Well, I'm retarded. Well, now, now it's time to find this that works. Well, this is kind of weird. The Matrox Millennium 450 dual head. I assume that it was came out around the turn of the millennium. It apparently has the uh, stuff I need here that will make it plug in. Well, that's fascinating. I wasn't expecting to use that card. Okay, now we should be back to where we were before. So now we're running with the Matrox Millennium G450 dual head or just 450 dual head hey it worked we, we, now of course we got to start up in 16 color mode found new hardware wizard video controller um there's no way it's gonna find it i i went back and forth in my head whether or not it has this kind of stuff i mean i'm so used to seeing matrox shit of course you can't find the necessary software because you're a piece of ass all right don't search i will choose the driver to install Display adapters next. Oh, would you look at this? Matrox graphics is right at the top. Who would have thought? Matrox for Millennium G400 dual head. Does it matter? Well, it's the only things it's giving me is Matrox. It must already know it's a Matrox card. So... Let's try that. Close enough, right? Uh, shit. Is that easy? We're done? <gasps> We're done? <gasps> it works! Uh oh. Oh, shit. Shit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Oh, I gotta be careful here. Okay, we'll keep it 16. 
We'll keep it 640 by 480, switch it to high color 16 bit. Oh shit. Maybe I need to restart the computer. Man, maybe that's all I need to do. Why is this down here? Turn off the computer. Well, this looks neat. Uh, restart. All right, we're back. Can I change the uh, color to this? I cannot. Luckily, though, Matrox still hosts all their drivers online. And the one I've got downloaded right now supports both Windows 2000 and Windows XP, just like the NVIDIA package we looked at before. So I'm just going to transfer that to this hard disk, and uh, then we'll come back when I'm about to install it. All right, so here we are, the XP 2000 thingamajig. Did it not copy the setup.exe? Yeah, that's what I figured. What? Why? 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 Is that a... Uh, well, apparently it uh, deleted it. No. Well, you know what? I don't need it. Fuck it. I don't need the installer. I just have the INI files, and that's that's all I need. Go to display adapters. We'll um, update the driver. We'll specific location. I will choose the driver to install. Have disk, browse, computer. So I just need to select the G450. I don't know if MMS is going to be necessary. Okay. Next. Yes. An error occurred? Are you pooping on me? <sighs> well, let's try it again. Update driver. Specific location. Choose. Have disk. Browse. 450 MMS. Okay. Next. Yes. Oh my god. I'm gonna piss. I'm gonna piss. I'm gonna piss right now. <gasps> okay. So I extracted the folder on Windows 10 so that it doesn't have the issue with the setup.exe. What the fuck? It still does it? So then, if that's that, then what about this? Oh, is this what I... Oh, my piss. you telling me this is not... I mean, I'm there. I am there. I have it. It's here. Why? 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 <laughs> we're going to have to go with the video card that we're using on the, the AMD K6 motherboard. The one we've been using for the past four or five videos. Who friggin' knows? So we'll take the beautiful and wonderful Matrox Millennium that just has not been very useful to me in general. I don't I don't know what it is. It just hasn't worked out. Like, it didn't work. You couldn't play Minecraft with it. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff that didn't work out, and I had to swap it out for something else. So this one is not an AGP card. This is an, a PCI card. But uh, no matter, it'll still do the trick all the same. All right, we're all good to go. Well, that works too. ATI Technology 3D Rage Pro PCI. It already detected it. So let's, uh, let's how about some uh, different colors here? High color? Can we get high color? Oh my god, finally! Holy crap. Alright, give me can we have some resolution? Okay, yeah, there we go. Now we got some shit. Well, actually, there, I'm going to keep it like 800 by 600 so you guys can still sort of see it when I'm kind of all the way zoomed out there. So, there we go. So, now we can actually freaking start looking at Whistler stuff. Oh my god, look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Look. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, it's going to be the death of me. Okay. Where were we? So, desktop backgrounds. Do we have anything new? No, this looks like glitching out. 
or running out of memory in 16-bit colors. And this goes red in the background for some reason. Can't wait to see the... Uh, stuff. Well, yeah, why did that not load? Why? Okay. Yeah, these look like Windows ME uh, backgrounds. But they don't load past a certain amount. I don't know what that is. Can we get uh, a little bit of that? We can have that. How about this? What is this? Oh, e even on the inner monitor, it doesn't load all the way. This, I mean, it looks like you can see Whistler or something. It's because my resolution is not low enough? Well, let's go to the native resolution. Or is it too high? Oh my god, what the fuck? It's cut off here, too? So these are a problem with the files themselves, then. Um, let's try and find one. What is this? Oh my god, every single one is cut off. Even this sample one. Like, remember that one? The dude who's about to start racing? Yeah, no, it's fucking sucks, man. What the? What is going on? Well, I don't really care. I mean... I, well, I kind of care. I'd prefer to be able to see this one. Like, where, where is it? Like, let's see. Ooh, ooh, that looks pretty good, actually. Um, but uh, let's go to... You didn't even look. I know there's a file called Windows 2000 on there. Piece of piss. Okay, well, let's take a look at appearance, since the other shit doesn't seem to work. Um, the desktop backgrounds don't. So, visual style. Professional, which is this one. And Windows Classic, which is the old one. So, Professional, we can't really change a whole lot of stuff on. Let's go to Effects. Use the following transition effect from Menus and Tooltips. Scroll Effect. Fade Effect. Let's do Scroll, because I like that better. Use the following method for to smooth edges of screen fonts. So that's some anti-aliasing for fonts. Use large icons. Use shadows under menus. Window Show window contents while dragging. There we go. Apply. Hey, there we go. That's pretty smooth, too. Look at that. Okay, effects. Uh, I was just in there. Advanced. This is if you want to configure the not this. So I, I really like this. This reminds me of like some sort of like old school Linux UI. Um, the name escapes me, but uh, there's really just these pixel things here. And just. I really like it. I, really, I, I wish Windows XP looked like this instead. So right now, this is like the perfect hybrid between Windows ME and Windows XP. I mean, so much of it looks like Windows ME, but so much of it looks like Windows XP. It's really hard to say. I mean, you can see this is where this is becoming XP here. It's moving away from ME, the old clunky, and we're getting into something smooth and stylized here. So we're they're definitely getting there. So, oh yeah, let's take a look at the uh, shutdown. Uh, you can see we have got some more colors there. So let's try and do a restart. So let's take a look at what it looks like when we're first starting up with the new video card with the new, or the working graphics drivers. Hey, what? Huh? What the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Well, I, either way, that looks pretty slick. I really like how that looks. They kept the old Windows logo, and they made it look awesome. Desktop background, not so much, but oh well. Let's go into pictures here. See if we can actually find... Can we actually look at this? Okay, so we can look at this, but we can't set it to the desktop background. Um, that is weird. There's a lot of these things over here. It's like copy the folder, email the folder. I remember using these in like Windows ME and stuff, I think, to copy my shit around. Or did I go up here? It's like copy to folder or something. I don't remember. But uh, a lot of weird controls up here as well. Zoom in, zoom out, go to the next one. I, I don't know. Rotate it. Look at the programs, accessories, games. Yeah, we got Minesweeper. 
And wait a minute, what is that? Did Pinball come on Windows ME? Or was that XP only? I'm pretty sure it was XP only. But we got Pinball. And does this mean we have a beta version of Pinball? Well, I don't have great news because we don't have sound yet. I've got a Sound Blaster Live 5.1 surround sound version and uh, it's just begging to be used. So instead of doing this, why don't we get the Sound Blaster working? And I think I actually have the disc for that laying around. Maybe we'll get lucky and the drivers are already on here because, man, I don't want to look for them. Multiple multimedia audio controllers. That means that one of them is on the motherboard and the other one is in the sound card. So that means we got to do this a little bit differently. Oh my god, well, which one am I supposed to choose from? I guess I'll try the second one. Well, no shit, they're not installed. What the fuck? Okay, reinstall driver. Specific location. Choose the driver to install. Sound and video game controllers. There is no creative shit on here. Piss. <sighs> okay, we're back again with the now creative drivers here. Doing all sorts of weird shit. It's apparently the ultimate driver installer package that can install... Uh, <laughs> we can play that game creative. Taking out the uh, Sound Blaster Live 5.1 digital and installing the Creative ES 1373 or Model CT 5806. Could be a damn generic fucking card, man. So, should have it. Let's try it again. Wait, didn't I already extract this somewhere? Maybe it's extracted a temp. I didn't pay attention. Fuck! Let's see. Maybe it's auto detectable. I'm just off my game here. Well, here's some news. Hello, it auto-installed it. I didn't even need to install it. What the fuck? Why couldn't I pay attention? Yes, I'm retarded. I just plugged it in and it worked. It's beautiful. I am slowly learning what are the most compatible pieces of hardware. So far, the ATI 3D Rage Pro and this random PCI sound card are working so far, so... This is what we'll stick with for now. So now that we have that working, we should, of course, test the MIDI out. Perfect. I Perfect. So now we can play pinball. With the frickin' music. Has anybody played this game with the music on? Anybody? As you can see, the music didn't immediately start up. You do have to go into Options and select Music, and then F3, and then Game... Nobody's playing with the music? Shit. Seriously? Okay, now... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh my god, I'm not even playing. I'm not... It's playing itself. Okay, so I guess you get the idea. Whistler came with a copy of Pinball. And yeah. 
fax service administration why is that in the recently used what was i doing with this this is just for faxes fuck i don't know anything about this so now we got file a bug report which seems to be the thing that's unique to this copy of windows Report a bug to the Windows Whistler beta team. So as you can see, it has a similar kind of bug report thing as Neptune did. So Whistler 32-bit professional. What's new in this release? Compiled date. The hell? When? If you're new to. <laughs> Home. Windows Basics, Windows Accessories, Notepad. Oh, I see. This isn't filled out yet, I guess. So it says there's DVD player on here somewhere. Let's try and find it. If there is, we're playing a DVD. Uh, we got CD player, and we got Windows Media player, but no DVD player. I guess that didn't make it into this release. Compressing files and managing disk space. Yeah, so I think this is the Help Center. As you can see at the top, it says Help is Board. Again, nobody wrote the help yet. It's just empty. Fix a problem? I mean, I can open these trees, but I can't do anything else. Okay, uh, whatever. And of course, the screen here. It just says Microsoft Windows 2000, and then that's the most important number there, the build number. So... <laughs> This is what happens when my finger is six inches from the lens, and the focal point is more than six feet away. So that's you can see through it. That's weird. I don't I don't understand how optics work. And as you can see, it's, I have an AMD Athlon 64, and surprisingly, that hasn't caused any problems. Really should have. I don't know how that was that. No, maybe that's why I've been having all these troubles. I don't even know what I'm using. So what else am I going to do? Well, I I never seem to have a game plan with this. I just want to see if I can get everything working and uh, get a basic feel for it. we got Internet Explorer here. Could go on the Internet if I get uh, stuff working, but I don't really think that's a good idea. That's not what I wanted to do. No. Cancel. Yes. Yes. Fuck off. God damn it. So here we are. This is... Internet Explorer looks just like old Internet Explorer. Literally nothing different about any of this. Except the UI looks a little bit different because... Okay, that's weird. That That's actually a really creative feature. I don't know if you guys noticed that. So we have active at the top, inactive. Goes sort of a dark blue, active. But then we have... It goes to red... Where you, which shows that you have a foreground window within this program that prevents the interaction of this window. So as you can see, I can't click it. And then this, this is the foremost one. And then if I go like that, the whole thing goes together. All goes dark together. Click it again. Oh, there's some other box somewhere that's open. So I don't know why they didn't leave some something like that. That's pretty creative, because sometimes... You got something off to the side, or maybe it's on another monitor somewhere, and you're like, why is my shit frozen? I don't understand why. And of course, this will blink to show you, hey, the thing you're using is right here. But I I feel like that gives you an at-a-glance, yes, there's a box that's open somewhere. For some reason, Microsoft Fax is like another thing that's in here. I don't know why. Let's do the paint test. Yeah, it's perfect. Actually, speaking of paint test, why don't we draw something that's 800 by 600? Okay, that's that. And then, uh, what the fuck? All right, there we go. Now we're going to, uh, go to that. Now we're asking, why are you doing this? I want to see if I can change this. Okay. No, that's not what <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. Okay, so th my, this desktop background works. Why can't, uh,. The other ones work. Why can't I use... Uh, are these JPEG images? Is that why? Is that why this one doesn't work? <laughs> it still doesn't. I, I think it's because it's JPEG. It's just not working for that. Alright guys, I guess that's Whistler. Uh, I know we... I, 
wish I could have dug in a little bit further on this one. But uh, we made it. We did it. We got there. We're here, and it is working, and it pretty much just is a really weird experience. It feels like Windows XP and Windows ME at the same time. It, it feels at home, because I've used both of those operating systems for a very long time, and uh, everything I'm seeing, even though it's a hybrid, it's very familiar to me, and it's comfortable. And as you can see, I've been clicking around pretty fast. It hasn't been hanging up on me. It's just been blazing fast. Again, this is on a pretty a much newer processor than this is probably ready for, but that could account for the speed increases. But it seems to be rock solid. Um, now, when I keep I keep saying Windows ME, Windows ME, I mean stylistically. You didn't see a lot of colors like. Um, oh, I think they got rid of it. I think it's in Control Panel. It's still like that. No, I don't know what I was looking at, but there was some. The, the orange-ish kind of colors that you just never would see um, on Windows 2000. So Anyway, uh, I think it's been uh, pretty interesting here. You can see the NVIDIA shit got installed on there. Wait a minute, what is this? Speech? <gasps> Microsoft Sam from Windows Whistler? <laughs> Fuck! What a tease! What a tease! I'm sure somebody's figured out how to use that, and it probably sounds the same. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for now until I think of something else to do. Uh, shit. There's a getting started thingy here. It doesn't look anything different than Windows 2000. They probably just copied and pasted it. This is supposedly the screen that comes up right after you install it. Um, and I think it's all just Windows 2000 anyway. So nothing that we're really yeah see Windows no 2000. No matter where you are working, your computer will be easier to use and easier to manage because Microsoft Windows 2000 Professional is more compatible and more powerful. Okay, uh, yeah. So I you you've pretty much seen all there is to see for the most part. I'm sure there's some other shit in there that I'm missing, you know. But uh, maybe at some point I can come back around on some of these and. I'll try to get different things working. I know I fucked up my Neptune install. Uh, I might have to reinstall that to try some other stuff I'm planning. So we'll probably come back around to try some more stuff with some of these. But for right now, um, I guess we'll see you in the next one. See you later.